We are on the uh, Quicksilver out on the Great Barrier Reef and uh, getting ready to see what kind of sea creatures we can see. What kinds of opportunities out here to explore the underwater life. There are thousands of little ones out there. Tiny, tiny ones, silverfish. Yeah. I tried to take a picture of them. What's he doing? He's doing something with the coral. Is this one of the naturalists? Of course, we are at Agincourt Reef number three. Now, there's four in the Agincourt system, four reefs. But uh, there's actually 2,900 different uh, reefs in the entire Quaker Reef Marine Park. So, we're only really looking at a tiny little uh, portion of it today. And uh, we call this an outer reef location simply because uh, between here and the mainland, the water is actually quite shallow. And if anybody was looking at the uh, windows of Quicksilver 8, you would have noticed various reefs as we travelled out here. However, on the other side of this particular reef, the water does get very deep very quickly, drops down to about 2,000 metres. And of course there is no reef any further out. That's what it calls our reef location. Now we're looking at the uh, coral out there. This whole structure is uh, coral. It's formed by coral. Basically it's the laying down of a limestone skeleton over millions of years. Now most of the coral that you're seeing out there is actually alive. There will be some dead patches and I'll explain why a little bit later on. But if it's got currents alive, and uh, we've also got quite a few fish around today, which is uh, very handy as well. 
We've got lots of sunlight, so hopefully you'll get some uh, good photos as the sunlight does help with the colour. Going through a pretty large school of fish out in front of us at the moment. These fish are called fusiliers. And I uh, believe they're actually feeding at the moment. They're uh, trusting paintings in the water. Now this particular coral we're going around at the end here, this is uh, part of the boulder coral family that we call novel coral. You can tell by the actual uh, texture of the colony. Now this uh, coral does grow very slow. There's actually an anemone fish on the very top, the little red fish with the white stripe, and it's got a sea anemone hidden in the top of that colony there. If anybody's uh, seen the movie Finding Nemo, you'd be uh, a little bit familiar with uh, both those animals. That particular anemone is a Glacier Reef anemone. The uh, Nemo is actually a clown and a fish, so a very close cousin. The uh, hard branching coral that you see out there. Got a nice uh, school of fish down there on the left hand side as well. The black fish are a ringed surgeon fish. The lighter coloured fish are parrotfish. There's also a couple of fox faced rabbit fish, which are the yellow fish with the black and white faces themselves and therefore they're the ones that cause us the most discomfort. So if you do actually touch the coral, which we sort of ask you not to do, you do get stung, but because the stinging cell doesn't actually penetrate your skin, you do not feel the effects of the toxins. Just coming around the corner here, we've got some nice stagcorn coral, a couple of uh, very pretty fish down there, what we call a six banded angel fish hiding in amongst the staghorn coral there. We've got some uh, what we call a slipper coral down there on the right hand side. It sort of looks like mushrooms. There's actually four of them in a little circle down there. They're one of the largest coral polyps on the reef. What we call a solitary coral because it's just one polyp living by itself. <coughs> majority of coral that you see out there is what we call colonial coral because even though the individual polyps sort of are separate they are actually still connected very much at the very base of the colony so it's sort of in a way like banana trees where you have one sort of main tree a lot of suckers coming out all individual plants but all still joined together. Up high on the right hand side there's actually some soft coral. You can see it sort of swaying backwards and forwards up there. And that's what we call spaghetti coral. And you sort of uh, do look upwards a little bit. We've got a lot of um, sergeant majors which are uh, black and white striped damsel fish feeding on the surface. There's about 1,500 different uh, species of fish out here on the reef. About 85% of fish out here eat algae or they eat maintenance. And therefore the, uh, the majority of fish that you're going to see today are actually quite small. 15% of fish out here are predators. So fish that eat other fish, mollusks or crustaceans. So a lot of these little fish are trying hard to live their life and not get eaten. And being small does uh, help you hide in amongst all the cracks and crevices provided by the coral, especially in amongst all the branching corals out there. Go over the top of all the other coral and we would lose the diversity of different coral species out here. And of course the breakdown of branching coral does form all that lovely uh, white sand that we have on the seabed down there. And the sand itself is home to uh, many, many different types of animals as well. Got a few fish coming up on the left hand side out there, very dark fish. What we call a black and white striped perch. Now before you tell me they don't have any stripes, um, that's quite true. That's because those are adult fish. The juveniles do have two very uh, striking white stripes down the side of their body. Up on the uh, left hand side there's actually some plate coral. 
Now it's very similar to the table coil, but plate coil is actually quite solid. You can see it out there up on the left hand side. We've also got some honeycomb coil basically straight on the left hand side as well. You can see the very circular sort of hexagonal patterns. Each one of those little circles, what we call a coral light. Some fair um, vegetation, food beds and things like that. There are a few that you'll find around reefs, but very, very rare. And this time of day, they'll be hiding. Too many fish and stuff. Do you know if there's any coral bleaching around there? It's not around here. I mean, it does occur sporadically along the actual reef. But uh, we've been fairly fortunate so far that it hasn't really done a lot of damage. So far. There's one major difference between the two. Soft corals are toxic. They have inbuilt protection from uh, marine life. There are a few different animals that will eat soft corals, but the majority uh, tend to leave it alone. Uh, Nudie breaks do uh, like eating soft corals. They've adapted to uh, the toxins. And because they have that inbuilt protection, uh, they don't need the hard limestone skeleton that the uh, hard corals make themselves. So they're quite happy to basically sway back and forward with the uh, water movement. submersible that uh, we just went out on. Uh, they're just loading uh, the next group. fish down there. Can you see him? Look at this guy coming up. Thank you. 